Ultrasound guided paracentesis is a common procedure performed in the emergency department and ICU. One of the most feared complications of this procedure is accidental vessel injury leading to hemorrhage. Ultrasound is typically used to find a suitable pocket of ascites. However, textbooks rarely mention that ultrasound can identify the inferior epigastric artery to prevent inadvertent vessel puncture. Here is an example of ascites with a suitable pocket to perform a paracentesis. This is an actual patient where I placed the probe fairly lateral on the abdominal wall. However, at this exact site, I changed my probe from a curvilinear transducer to a linear transducer. And this is the image that I obtained. Notice the abdominal wall, the peritoneum, and the inferior epigastric vessels directly in the location of my planned needle path. It would be great if everyone's anatomy was similar to this picture with the inferior epigastric arteries following this path. However, Patients with ascites often have laterally displaced inferior epigastric arteries due to abdominal wall stretching and distension. Even switching back to the curvilinear transducer with appropriate depth, notice the difficulty of visualization of the vessels here. Therefore, it is suggested that prior to the paracentesis, use the linear probe to identify inferior epigastric vessels and mark them prior to the start of the procedure. It only adds 10 seconds to the procedure and could potentially prevent devastating complications. How do you actually do it? Well, using a high-frequency linear transducer, place the probe transversely just below the umbilicus. Slowly move the probe laterally to the side of the planned needle entry. Commonly, you will identify the inferior epigastric artery as a round hypoechoic vessel flanked by two veins just superficial to the peritoneum. Here's another example of the inferior epigastric artery seen with color flow Doppler here just above the peritoneal lining. Here is another example of the inferior epigastric artery here, flanked by two hypoechoic inferior epigastric veins. Here is another example of the inferior epigastric vessels. And here is the final example of the inferior epigastric vessels identified just prior to paracentesis to prevent puncture of these vessels.